Hey guys, today we're gonna to be planting some fall bulbs. And when I say fall bulbs, I mean bulbs that you plant in the fall that bloom in the spring. More specifically, daffodils and muscari or grape hyacinth. We're also gonna to be touching on tulips, which in colder winter climates, you can plant in the ground already. Uh, in warmer winter climates like mine, there's some steps we have to go through, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let me know down below what your favorite fall planted bulbs are and what you're growing this year. Now, right now is a great time here in Southern California and maybe most places to plant fall uh, bulbs. You wanna plant them if you're in a, a place that has a killing frost, after the first killing frost is best when you're kind of cleaning up the rest of the garden, raking up all the leaves, that's a great time to get your fall bulbs planted. And you can plant them all the way up until you can't work the ground anymore because it's frozen. In mild winter climates like eight, nine, 10, this is a great time you wanna plant your bulbs mid-November and that would go for anything that does not need chilling. Most notably tulips, they definitely need winter chill that we outside cannot give them. So we have to fake them out by giving them uh, six to 12 weeks in the refrigerator to make them think that they had a cold winter. If you don't do this, they will not bloom properly. They will either have really short stems, uh, maybe no stems at all. They actually bloom down among the leaves, which you don't want that in a tulip. You want their bloom to be carried high above the leaves. So if you're in a cold winter climate, go ahead and plant your tulips now. That's fine. You don't need to chill them at all. If you do need to chill them, you have to plan ahead. The latest you can plant tulips is about uh, January, mid-January in a mild winter climate. And so you want to count back from there, six to 12 weeks, which right now I think we're about eight weeks. You guys believe it's six weeks until the end of the year already. Uh, but I think we're eight weeks now then from the middle of January. So I'm going to go ahead and put my tulips in the fridge. Now you want to be careful when it comes to putting bulbs in the refrigerator. And this is where a second fridge or even a mini fridge helps because you don't want to put uh, bulbs into a refrigerator that has fruits and vegetables. Because fruits and vegetables let off ethylene gas. Now it's completely harmless to humans, but it will affect the performance of bulbs. Now I tend to have a problem chilling my tulips in the refrigerator because it seems to, we don't have a crisper drawer. And so it seems, in the one in the garage at least, it seems that it it dries them out, it dehydrates them. Last year I had quite a few that ended up being pretty much useless. Um, they did not work well at all because they were so dehydrated. So this year, I'm actually gonna do a little experiment with some of the tulip bulbs. I'm gonna mix them into some damp vermiculite and put that entire uh, container in the fridge for the appropriate amount of time, six to 12 weeks. And hopefully that will uh, help. Now I figure, those of you in cold climates, you're putting yours in the ground right now where it's probably gonna stay damp throughout the winter. So I'm not thinking that's gonna be a big problem, but I couldn't find anything about it online. Like nobody said anything about it. So I'm gonna step out there and do this experiment. And I'll let you know in the middle of January, I'll do a, a planting video for the tulips and I'll let you know if that worked. So enough talk, let's head out to the cottage garden and get started with the planting. So bulbs like to be planted in full sun to part shade. The interesting thing about bulbs is they have everything they need in this bulb to do everything they're supposed to do, except moisture. They need that added from the outside world. Some don't. Some, uh, like amaryllis, you can buy them at Christmas time and they're covered in wax. You can't water them and they do everything they need to do besides reproduce. Now right here, during the winter, there's quite a bit of shade. And that's okay because in the springtime, when these bulbs are blooming, this is going to be full sun. And that's really what's important. Like I said, they have everything they need to bloom except some moisture. They don't need sun to bloom, but they do need sun to reproduce. So by April, by May, when these are starting to, when the flowers have faded, all the green leaves that are left, they gather the energy from the sun and store it in their bulbs for next year's flowers. And so they can start off in the winter in the shade as long as they have between four and six or more hours of sun per day during that time where they can store up energy for the next year. So you should always be aware 
of where the sun and shade are at different times during the year because it does change. Now this only matters for bulbs that are going to come back the following year. So here we cannot grow tulips year after year. They're a one and done, they're grown as an annual, we don't get cold enough winters, and then even if you were to, or to dig them up and put them in the fridge, they still don't do very well. It's like that in a lot of places, unfortunately. So with tulips, you can just, once they're done blooming, just yank them out of the ground, unless you're at a spot where they grow year after year, which I'm envious, but I'm not envious probably of your winters. So other than you guys, the rest of us just yank those tulips out at the end of the year and throw, or at the end of the blooming season and throw them in the compost. However, for a lot of other bulbs, daffodils being one of them, uh, you want to leave the green leaves on until they've dried up and, and they're brown. Then you can cut them off because what they're doing is they're storing that energy for next year's uh, growth and bloom. Now, in terms of planting depth and spacing, all bulbs require different depths and different spacing, and it really depends on the size of the bulb. So for specifics, you know, look at the package that your bulbs came in, and that's the best way to tell. But as a rule of thumb, you want to plant a bulb two to three times deeper than its height. So for daffodils, six to eight inches deep is a good depth. And spacing, the same thing, about six inches apart. I'm going to put mine a little closer together because I want a big show from the beginning. So I'm probably going to put them maybe four inches apart. Uh, if you don't know, there are usually uh, two ends of a bulb, the pointy end and the flat end. The flat end goes down, the pointy end points up. So another big question about bulbs is should I fertilize them? Uh, that depends on when and what type of bulb it is. If it is a bulb that is going to be a one and done, like tulips are here, I'm not going to bother fertilizing them at all because like I said, they have everything they need in that bulb for this year's growth. Next year, they're not going to grow, so I don't care. But for others that will stick around for several years or will naturalize and be there forever and continue to multiply every year, uh, you do want to fertilize those. Now, for the most part, uh, they just get whatever fertilizer, balanced organic fertilizer I give them or, or I give the rest of the plants that they're growing in and among throughout their season. But in a lot of places, including here, uh, phosphorus does not move very easily through the soil. And phosphorus are really what bulbs need because it's all about root development and bulb development, and that's where phosphorus works. And so since it can't move through the soil, you wanna get as much as possible at the root level from the get-go. Now, phosphorus could be in things like bone meal and rock phosphate. I actually use both. Bone meal is very quickly available to the roots, and so that's kind of a, a quick release fertilizer. And then I also put rock phosphate in because that is available for several years. Now, bulbs like daffodils, if they are kind that kind of multiply, you might want to dig them up every three or four years and separate them and kind of spread them out a little bit. And rock phosphate will definitely feed them all through that three or four years. So you don't even have to worry about it. And then when you dig them up and replant them, you can put some more phosphate in the bottom of the hole. So it's kind of like a quick release for this year and a slow release for the coming years. But if you only have bone meal or just want to use one, uh, bone meal is going to give them the biggest bang this year. Now there are two ways to plant bulbs. Uh, you can plant them individually or you can plant them as a group. So individually, you can get a bulb planter. So a bulb planter like this one here, you just shove it in the ground. Hopefully you have soft soil or it's not gonna be very easy. And it will pull out, make sure the soil is kind of damp and it will pull out a plug that's the shape of the planter. And then you can put your fertilizer in put the bulb in and then just slip the entire plug out of the bulb planter, fit it right back down in the hole, move on to the next one. You can also get ones that are like a shovel that you can step on that might make it a little easier if your soil may not be as soft as some others. My favorite way as of a couple of years ago is with an auger. This is an auger from Power Planter. They didn't sponsor the video, but in full disclosure, they did send me this auger to try and I love it. I especially love it because it is, it's long. It's not like a, a short one like this, 
which I've used in past videos. So you don't have to bend over so much or be on your hands and knees all the time planting all of these bulbs. Now I will say one thing about augers like this. They fit a regular um, 20 volt drill, uh, but I would recommend if your drill does not have one of these handles and you can get these to add on, uh, get one. Because when you run this auger, it does a great job. The problem is if it hits a root or a rock, the auger stops spinning but the drill continues to spin and you can hurt or even break your wrist. And so having this extra handle to hold on to gives you a little more control over that. Uh, putting the drill on medium or low speed also helps. Now I would use an auger like this uh, when I'm planting bulbs in a flower bed that has already been amended and maybe grown in for years and has uh, good soil and good drainage. That's not necessarily what I have here starting out my first year in this cottage garden. So in that case, I'm going to need to do a group planting because it needs to be deeply amended. Like I said, the daffodils are going to go down maybe eight inches and then I want a little bit underneath that to be amended as well. So in that case for me, it's just easier to dig a hole that's nine or ten inches deep and kind of the shape that I want the bulbs to grow in. Once I've got that shape and that depth, I'm gonna put some compost into the bottom of the hole, mix it with the native soil that's there, uh, and then flatten it out. At that point, I'm just gonna sprinkle my bone meal and my rock phosphate all over the bottom of the hole and mix it in a little bit. And at that point, then I will start to put my bulbs into the, the hole. And again, I'm gonna be putting them about four inches apart. You can put them up to six inches or further if you want to. And once I have that hole filled and there's no more space on the bottom in terms of the correct spacing, then I'm gonna put in some more compost and a little more soil just to cover them up. Now, if that's all you're planting here, go ahead and fill that hole back up to ground level. But I want some muscari or grape hyacinth growing underneath my daffodil. So when everything's up, the daffodils are going to be taller, yellow and yellow and white. These, these varieties are. One of these is Ice Follies and one of these is Dutch Master. So yellow and yellow and white with purple underneath. So what I'm going to do is layer these bulbs. I've got a layer now of soil over the daffodils because they need to be planted deeper. And the muscari or the grape hyacinth only need to be about three to four inches deep. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more of my fertilizer, mix it in, and then I'm going to go ahead and plant my uh, grape hyacinth or muscari right on top of that, about three inches apart. Once I've got them all placed, I'm just going to fill in with a little bit of uh, compost and then fill the entire hole up with the rest of the soil. Kind of firm it all down and you can throw some mulch on that if you want to. Give it a good watering. And you always want to make sure your bulbs are in moist soil uh, so water when rains aren't adequate and if you're in a cold winter climate and the ground is frozen you don't have to worry about watering them i am really looking forward to some color up here this spring you know ever since we moved in it was mainly succulents that didn't bloom um, and so there's been either green or kind of green greenish brown or brown when everything's dead or taken out like it is now. So man, I'm really looking forward to some color up here. Oh, one great thing is, if you've been watching my gopher saga, um, alliums and daffodils and muscari, they are not bothered apparently by rodents like gophers. And so, I mean, I'm hoping that's right. I found it from multiple places. Many of you guys have told me that. And so I'm, I've got my fingers crossed that that's the case because to protect all these bulbs would be really annoying. Now, that being said, rodents and gophers will go after tulips, but I'm okay with that because I'm gonna be actually putting my tulips in pots to line this path going up to the new cottage. So those will be fine. So the color up here should be great. You know, daffodils and muscari in the ground, tulips along the path. I'm also planting um, a lot of flowering, spring flowering trees up here, like crab apple, red bud, flowering cherries. Um, so it should just be a riot of color up here uh, in every, every spring to come. But, you know, the more years that pass, obviously, the more color will be up here. 
This is just a first small step. If you guys learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Share it with a friend if you can. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not, and I'll see you next time.